There's so many tutorials for doing two PC streaming setups, but why? Why use two PC when one PC do trick? The idea of a two PC setup is to use one PC that's dedicated to just OBS and all your alerts and all your overlays. And then you can have a separate PC that's dedicated to just gaming. The idea is that by offloading your gaming to a separate PC, you can get the best in-game performance without OBS bogging down your frame rates and then making you die because it's definitely not you. You're super good at gaming, King. Here's the thing. Two PC setups are complicated. Everybody has their own method. There's so many different ways to do it. Lots of people use capture cards, but those can be expensive. Some people recommend NDI, but that can be a laggy mess. Other people have recommended an OBS plugin called Teleport, which I haven't had a lot of success with. I'm gonna show you a method that requires nothing, okay? No capture cards, no extra software, just OBS. And if you wanna know how good this method is, you see that TV back there? I'm actually streaming this video over to that TV, and that's a 4K60 signal with very little latency, no drop frames, no stuttering. This method isn't gonna be for everyone, but it's so damn simple, it takes like less than two minutes to set up, so you might as well give it a try. Speaking of two PCs, I just set up a second PC like a couple months ago, and I needed a Windows activation key because I wanted to get rid of that watermark. So I use this video sponsor, VIP SCD key. You can get a Windows 10 OEM license for as little as $16 and you just use a secure payment method like PayPal and they'll send you over an activation key to your email. Pump that bad boy into your Windows settings and boom, your Windows is activated. No more watermark forever. And if you wanted to upgrade to Windows 11, you can do that for free using those keys or if it's easier for you, you can just straight up buy a Windows 11 key too for like $22. Make sure to use the code NUTTY at checkout to get 25% off. Thank you VIP SED key for sponsoring this video. You should consider getting a shorter name because that is really long to say. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing this video backwards. Normally I give you all of the background info first and then I tell you where to click in OBS. But this time I'm gonna just show you the method straight up and then afterwards I'll explain to you what actually happened and that will help you decide whether this method is even right for you because it might not be. Step one, get two PCs. No shit. Step two, install OBS on both PCs. I'm gonna call the first PC your streaming PC. So this is what's gonna have all your alerts, all your overlays. It's gonna be what streams to Twitch, YouTube, Chatterbait, whatever it is, okay, I'm not gonna judge you. The second PC, I'm gonna call your gaming PC. It doesn't necessarily have to be for gaming, but it, it's just easier that way. I'm gonna write which PC I'm talking about in the bottom right so you don't get confused. On your gaming PC's OBS install, you're going to add a single game capture source to capture your game. That is all that you wanna to add to your canvas, so no alerts, no overlays, just a game capture source. Then click on settings and go into the stream tab. Now, you might be thinking, stream tab, we're not streaming. I thought this was our gaming PC. Trust me, it will all make sense. Change the source type to custom, and then in the server box, type SRT slash slash the IP address of your streaming PC, colon, port number, which we'll get into in a second, and mode equals caller. If you don't know how to get the IP address of your streaming PC, go to your streaming PC, go into the command prompt and type in IP config. And the number right here, that's your IP address. So that's what you wanna put after SRT. For the port number, I just used 22222. And that worked for me but you can really use any number that you want as long as it's not already being used. If you don't know if a port number is already being used, I'll leave a link down below that tells you how to figure that out. What this will do is instead of sending your video directly to Twitch, it's going to send it to your streaming PC. So now go over to your streaming PC and you're going to add a media source. Now just copy all the settings you see on screen and in the input box, copy this out. So just SRT, the IP address of your streaming PC, the port number you used before, and instead of mode equals caller, you wanna put mode equals listener. And with that added, you can go over to your gaming PC, hit the start streaming button, and everything you see on your gaming PC's OBS 
should appear in your streaming PCs OBS. That's literally it, you're done. You didn't need any extra software, no capture cards, no plugins, literally just OBS. Now you'll probably want to adjust the settings in your gaming PCs OBS. So change your encoding settings, like your bit rate, the resolution frame rate. But if you've set up OBS before, you're already familiar with all of those settings. Okay, so what's actually happening here? So when you stream to Twitch, OBS does a process known as encoding, which is basically squishing down your video so that it's small enough to be shat over the internet. Well, here we're doing the exact same process, but we're sending the video from our gaming PC over to the streaming PC. It's really important that you understand that because while this method is really easy, there are some implications to using this method, which might not make it appropriate for what you wanna do. For one, the main reason why we even wanted a two PC setup is so that our gaming PC can focus on just gaming. And as you can tell from this method, our gaming PC is also encoding. So doesn't that defeat the purpose of this two PC setup? Kind of, but not really. The OBS setup of your gaming PC is probably gonna be a lot simpler than the OBS setup that's on your streaming PC because your streaming PC probably has like 30 OBS plugins, all these animated overlays and videos and all these different animations and channel point rewards. Your gaming PC doesn't need to do any of that. And with the NBank encoder, you can make your OBS setup on your gaming PC extremely lightweight to the point where it barely impacts your gaming performance. I'm literally recording 1080p 60 and OBS is using 0.1% of my CPU. That's insane. It's not gonna be perfect. You might notice a slight decrease in performance, but if you're at a point where you have like so many effects and overlays going on that it's really affecting your gameplay hard, then this could still be a useful method for you. The other problem with this method is that because you're encoding your video on your gaming PC, it's going to get re-encoded again by the time it hits the streaming PC, and then again by the time it hits Twitch. So between your gameplay and when it hits your viewer's eyes, your video is gonna be encoded like three times and that might have a detrimental impact to the visual fidelity of your stream. Now you can mitigate this by just like blasting the bit rate from your gaming PC. It just means that you're gonna have to have a pretty decent network connection between your gaming PC and your streaming PC. There's some other issues that you'll run into, one of them being latency. Now the latency with this method is pretty good. For me, most of the time I get less than a second of latency, but you you have to be aware that your gameplay will lag one second behind your camera and your microphone. And it might look weird when you're celebrating 20th place in Apex one second before you actually get 20th place in Apex. Now you can fix that by adding a delay to your camera and your microphone. Personally, I hate doing that, so I'll just deal with the latency. The other thing you could do is you could connect your camera and your microphone to your gaming PC, but then you're gonna be asking your gaming PC to do more stuff. So at that point, it's just like a one PC setup, but with extra steps. However, one of the great things about this method is it scales really well. So if you wanna set up a triple PC setup or a quadruple PC setup, which sounds stupid, but there are use cases where that is actually a thing, for example, like setting up live tournaments, you can easily set up another PC and another PC and another PC using the exact same method and all you need to change is that port number. Finally, there is one really annoying bug that I ran into. So if your streaming PC happens to also be recording and your gaming PC for some reason gets disconnected from your streaming PC, it will be impossible to restart the stream from your gaming PC until you've stopped the recording on your streaming PC. This is a very specific bug and I'd be surprised if anyone watching even experienced the bug because there's probably only like four people still here. I don't think this video is gonna be doing very well in the analytics. But it's a bug that's been around on the OBS forums for more than two years and they still haven't fixed it. Now there is a workaround. It turns out that if you add another media source that has that SRT mode equals caller link, if you add another one of those, but then you just change the port number to another port that you never connect to, you never use this at all, 
Uh, it turns out that the existence of that media source just fixes it and it works. I don't know why, but it's been working for me. So I'm just gonna leave it. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, the views on this channel have been pretty shit lately. So like, why don't you guys follow me, yeah? I very rarely ask that of you guys. So I feel like I can do that, right? The video was helpful, wasn't it? Also come follow me on Twitch. I stream this kind of stuff like three nights a week. And if you were following me on Twitch before, you would have seen this method before. So that would have been useful for you if you did that earlier. Bye, see you later.